Muhammad Ali told everyone that he was the greatest long before he actually believed that himself. And Jaco Pistorius did something pretty similar, going around telling everyone that he was the greatest bass player in the world just at the age of 24. Now that clearly worked out pretty well for them. But then you've got a lot of the other great musicians who would say that they were nothing special and that they still had masses to learn even when they were going into their 70s after a lifetime of amazing work. Confused? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can get the best of both worlds, boosting your self-belief while still remaining realistic and able to learn from your mistakes. And this is the approach that's been used by a lot of the great athletes for decades to keep them performing at the top level and yet still making amazing long-term progress. There are two schools of thought on self-belief. One, that you should protect your self-confidence at all costs so that you perform better. And another, that you should be constantly aware of the mistakes you're making so that you can learn from them and grow in the long term. Leaves us with a really tricky choice of which one of those we go to. Both clearly got good points. So which one do you currently identify with? Are you all about protecting your self-belief or are you aware of mistakes for long-term improvement? Let me know by writing believe or improve in the comments below. And the answer, of course, is that both of these things are right. So you've got a balancing act to put yourself in the right place. But the trick is to be aware that balancing is not a static thing. It's not a case that you find the perfect point on the line in between self-belief and being aware of your mistakes and you sit there at all costs at all times. No, it's about being dynamic and recognizing that there are times where you want to prioritize self-belief and times where you really want to be aware of your mistakes, your shortcomings, so that you can work on those. And the skill is in knowing where you want to be at any one time and having the flexibility to shift your mindset, your approach, so that you can move along that scale between the two extremes. And let's look at the classic approach that sportsmen and women use. They go round in a cycle and it's going to turn out that this is a great example for us as musicians as well. So immediately after they've had a performance, played a match, whatever it is, they will totally protect their self-belief. They will take the positives, they will focus on what went well and how they can feel confident about themselves coming out of that. This is to stop them getting negative and losing motivation in the weeks ahead. But a few days after that, that's when they go back and they look at the performance in detail and they analyze what went wrong, what could I have done better? Because this is the point where they realize if I'm gonna perform my best in the next game coming up, I need to work on these things, I need to improve. And in that stage of the cycle, they are focused on being aware of mistakes and improving on them. And this will last for quite a while, depending on how much time there is between matches, events, whatever it is. But probably a week or so before the next one, that's when they start thinking about the self-confidence and belief again. At that point, all this long-term training is not gonna have any impact on something only a week away, say. So that's where they go back to working on their self-belief so that they can perform at their absolute best when that match comes around. Match is over, they start the cycle again. Take the positives for a while and then they're gonna go back through that. Let's work on improvement. And then before the next match again, once more, we're back to raising up that self-confidence. And we can take exactly the same approach as musicians. Immediately after a performance, don't go straight into that criticizing mode where you pick things apart and see what's wrong. Take, take away the positives instead. Feel happy about what you did. And then only a few days later, go back and analyze what do I want to improve on. Now, recording yourself can be really important here because that is what's going to allow you to 
not focus on anything that goes wrong at the time, but still know you will be able to work out things to learn from later. Having a recording of your performance is really helpful here. Then is when you go through that phase of deliberate practice on those things you want to improve. But a week or so, a few days, whatever it is before the next performance, leave that for a while. You've done as much as you can for now and work on feeling good about yourself and feeling confident about your performance again. Let me know how you get on with this by leaving a comment below. And if you'd like to go deeper into improving your self-belief, then check out my video on how to stop comparing yourself to other musicians next. I've been Mark Morley Fletcher. Thanks so much for watching. Please click below to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And while you're down there, why not hit share to pass this video on to other musicians. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.